I want you to pay attention on something. Go key on only. Okay, checking your light illuminates on self test. Start the vehicle and checking your light is off. So this customer took this vehicle to those places where they scan it for free. And he said, they said there is not a problem with the vehicle, but he's feeling the problem, it's shaking. It's uh, the, 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 you know, <laughs> the engine is moving. You can feel it, the misfire. But I wanted to show something else here. So I got this generic scanner here and I wanted you to pay attention on something here. Oops, let me close this door, okay? So then, as you can see here, this is generic scanner. So this is something like this is what they use for scanning this vehicle and find out there is not a problem. Okay, diagnostic. This is a, just a generic scanner. How many codes? Zero. Red is monitor. A okay, all complete. So we're gonna go engine, recodes, store codes. Okay. Redness monitor, redness monitors. This is to find out if someone is being here, all okay. Okay, all okay, nobody has erased codes. So everything is clean. No problem, huh? Right? Yeah, we saw that one with the snap on here. How many we have here. Why the genetic scanner is not uh, recognizing those codes? Well, if we see all of these are manufactured codes, all of them, none of them is generic. We are using generic scanner on this side here. So none of them start with P. All of, their, all of them start with a factory um, codes. Okay, so we're gonna start a diagnostic here now. And I will do the diagnostic with this scanner just to prove the concept of knowing how the system works or looking at some parameters. We can diagnostic with chip tool, but using the most expensive tool, which is uh, the knowledge, how the system works and operate and how to use the scanner. Well, if we can see here, we got, um, I scanned 26 computers here. And uh, on the DME, it's the engine computer, we got misfire code for cylinder three. Well, basically it's uh, three, four, five, six. All those cylinders. We have Baltronic sluggish movement. So that is when this one does like, some like this, you know, the engine is shaking. so. I probably wouldn't worry too much about that one. Maybe, I don't know if that is a cause or effect, but this mixture control, yep, this could be a problem because this one could be a, a link misfire, so those misfire, or a rich misfire. So these are probably the field control is the first gonna be attacking. We have for bank one and bank two, basically, in the Banos uh, outlet mechanical, okay? So we're gonna start diagnosing this one. We're gonna see where this one is taking us to. Uh, customer concern, only on low RPMs. Lower RPM is the engine is shaking. And uh, when he accelerates, it got better with no problem, he said. And uh, keep going here. Okay, so I'm starting the engine here. And the engine is running rough. So we're gonna go here and I'm just gonna be picking up some light data. And I wanted to get anything related to um, fuel control now because customer is saying the vehicle is only, um, it only does it when uh, it's uh, in idle and I can feel it now. So we wanted to see a um, fuel loop control. So for sure, short term we wanted to see this is common on, on both banks bank one and bank two so we wanted to see if um, whatever condition is affecting both bank so we are in closed loop in both bank and we can see right now this is working perfect and I can feel it you know 
the engine is it's not working right now it's working fine I, I don't feel any problem right now as it is you know in, in, in short term and long term are good I'm accelerating It's taking fuel away there. Well, it doesn't want to act up right now at this point. So I'm gonna wait for this one to act up because right now it's working, it's working fine. Now I got the system to start working, you know, like a little bit rough. We can see right there. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, idle right now. How much fuel? See how it went even to an open loop for a moment. And it did some crazy stuff there. So, but look at this one. When I accelerate, it's on the negative side. Let me see. So let this stabilize. So right there, this is the numbers we have. Okay, very high positive numbers. The computer is compensating for a lean condition. And this is occurring on the idle. To see when I accelerate, I'm accelerating here. We are in close loop, you see? Those numbers are getting better and better as I'm, I'm accelerating. This is a indication of we have some vacuum leak. Well, I got my special tool here for measuring the, uh, on these Europeans on the crankcase <clears throat> pressure. Well, I wanted to measure how many inches of water we have. However, <clears throat> this thing doesn't have an oil dipstick, so that's it's hard for me. So I'm just putting my hand here and you will hear what happened here when I release this one. That sounds some like a lot of like a crankcase uh, back in too much pressure you know and I can't really use my tool because I don't have you know an adapter for here I can make one but um, I, I don't have it but that is way too much vacuum see how, how it's sucking my, my glove so also for in uh, some moments this thing is not at all time the PCB valve is here on the back so this is the crankcase uh, regulation valve and this one was whistling and was making a whistle noise but it's not right now uh, right there is a little bit of whistle in the valve but it, it's too much crankcase uh, pressure on this thing so we will, I will recommend um, the the crankcase uh, ventilation oil separator they call which is a PCB on this one here they updated this on older years it's under the intake manifold however on this one it's here so I got too much pressure on my hand when I put it here you know I feel the pressure here that thing should be like 10 inches of water like uh, it's barely nothing you know 10 inches of water is like not even a quarter of one psi so it's a uh, barely nothing so well it is not acting up that bad right now but I still you know I can make my decision here and recommend the ball cover for this now it's working even it just does it sometimes y ahora vemos este voy a acelerar a ver lo que va a pasar se van a ir mejorando ¿Ve cómo se fueron mejorando? Estamos todavía en CL, ¿qué? Entre más acelero se mejoran los números. Eso me indica a mí que tengo una... que es una pérdida de, de vacío. O sea, tengo una fuga de vacío. ¿Sí? Que okay, vamos a ver dónde está la fuga de vacío. En este vehículo es interna, no es externa la, la fuga es interna. 
está que este, la PCB, la, el vapor, sep oil vapor Separator le llaman, está absorbiendo demasiado, creando demasiado vacío. Que no me deja ni destapar esta. Aquí van a oír uh, cuando destape la tapadera. ¿Cuánto está jalando de vacío? Eh, ni quitarla puedo con el vehículo arrancado. Ahora bien, y pongo mi mano. Y oye, ¿cómo le hace? Esto no tendría que tener ese vacío. O sea, la válvula ha fallado en este. También la válvula de PCB o Oil Vapor Separator le llaman. Well, I got the, the approval from the customer. Got this one for Euro Parts, is the name of this one. Um, which is coming with the whole ball cover gasket. We can see it here. And here is the PCB uh, bulb, the one uh, I was talking about on this corner. I'll take it out here. We're gonna look at that one. And also, I have it here. I'm showing here. This is the vapor separator, which is, will be called pretty much the uh, PCB bulb. That's if the one fails and creates a lot of um, crankage pressure. So when we replace this one, we need to use the scanner to retract the motor here for the eccentric shaft. However, I'm gonna show a way to do it without using the, the scanner. I have it, but we can do it without using the scanner. So I'm gonna go through the process because the customer authorized this one. And um, we can see here, the whole PCB, we cannot see anything here inside. Everything is sealed. So I got it here. Uh, we can see here. What happened is on this one, you know, um, we don't want that tension on the motor. So like right now it has a lot of tension. We don't want this one come out of and jump over. So what we do is uh, we turn it here. See right now, there is free. So right there. So at that point, you know, what we do is <clears throat> we keep uh, removing those and we don't want that tension of the spring. So we, we play here until we got no tension, it's coming out. You see when I started how it was? It was with a lot of tension, like here. So I started right there. So then you can start removing those. We don't want this one to start come out and fly. When we put it back, the same thing, you know. We wanted to do those without resistance. And we play with this. And at the end, what we do is we're gonna do a key on, engine off like twice, so that way it auto adjusts itself. So I have everything I need for this job, so some scrub bright uh, cleaner. So to clean the surface here, all this surface, and also this surface here, where the eccentric motor goes. Here is like a kind of sensor detecting the position of that one. Based on that one, they are adjusting that one like this, you know, to vary the intake valve lift. We can see here, this one is like a half moon style only here i can see half half tooth and on the other side see only from here to here it's halfway so where is the motor you know uh moves the rotates that one to bury the bolt intake bolt lift and uh, i'm gonna be cleaning the surface um i, I like to add some uh, right stuff uh to <clears throat> the surface here so I got some sealant I'm gonna be adding to this surface over here where the they seal for the uh, spark plugs uh, two seals and right here we use something clean it up with that one and get back everything together okay so we're almost done here with the beamer so got some zip ties around there to keep it away and uh got the motor here so this one is 
it's gonna go in we're gonna make sure this one line up here on that one then I'm gonna go like this okay so and then we rotate it right there you can see boom yeah see so that way we're ready to put the bolts back there if you desire you can add some uh, sealing on that where the motor sit against the gasket here I will add some <clears throat> but for demonstration purpose how to do it because this is so easy you know, like see what happened here I'm just gonna remove it and add um, the sealer the, the, the sealing um, but I just wanted to show how to do it okay so and I'm gonna go key on after I'm done and recheck fuel trims too well I'm finished here except for those panel those cover goes there uh, I have those over here um, but we're ready to go key on engine off at least two times to try to calibrate this one at least to to get the the position you know not calibrate but um i'm gonna do that and monitor uh fuel trim data So as we can see it's adjusting right now before it was on a positive uh, side and now it's on the negative well it's, you can see there it went pretty much it's adjusting there but when we're looking for a fuel trim data we gotta make sure uh, the fuel system is in closed loop one and two on the top because see, if that one is like in closed loop like that right now we'll see open loop drive and it's open loop uh, fall too sometimes so then we cannot count anymore with a uh, short term and long term for the diagnostic purpose at that time but as it is right now we can see everything is working fine good it's fixed the beamer